Awesome. Welcome to the Rubicon Show. We're going to go through what I would personally say is one of the best run NFT communities. Uh, the way they've organized it, the way they've uh, introduced things slowly, but like so perfectly. We're going to break that down. It's called Proof Collective and we'll give our thoughts on it. Give you a little bit of history behind it too, because that's basically what we're doing. We're trying to learn in this industry uh, and then build our own stuff so we can bring the best stuff to you guys. So we're going to be sharing screen. I'm going to be jumping over to my second monitor here. So if you don't know uh, what Proof is, this is Kevin Rose over here. I originally know Kevin Rose from uh, his Tim Ferriss episodes. Um, he was the first ever Tim Ferriss uh, podcast episode way back, probably 2015-ish. Um, but he was also the founder of Dig, uh, which was like Reddit's predecessor. Um, and then he worked at Google and he's super high up in tech. He lives in New York and he used the same uh, Russian bathhouse as me once. So good times there. Um, but recently he's dived deep into Web3. Um, he said he was there for the first ever um, minting of CryptoPunks where he minted 10. Um, and then he said he dropped off Web3 for a few years and came back as soon as CryptoPunks were starting to pump just a couple of years ago. Um, um, yes. On that, I know I'm not fact-checked, but he is the person who told Gary about CryptoPunks and NFTs. Fascinating. I do believe that is uh, true, which is kind of funny because they were both pioneers of Web2. Um, there's a good photo of them outside some conference somewhere sitting on the curb when they're both basically nobodies. So they are now both pioneers of Web3. Uh, and thanks to the Proof Collective, they both hold at least, you might disagree with this, top 10, top 20 projects. Be friends and proof. Oh, uh, um, don't know. Uh, Up there. I can, yeah, well... well. They're on the frontier, and I think time will tell that they will continue to be on the frontier. So Kevin Rose was very fascinated by NFTs. He's actually quite fascinated by the art side, which I think Gary's less art, more utility. Kevin's a little bit more art, but obviously a lot of utility given what he's doing with this project. And he created Proof Podcast on Apple Podcasts. Actually, he had um, Modern Finance first, so he was deep into the DeFi summer uh, world. And then he created Proof for the exclusively for NFTs. And it was actually fascinating because I was listening to a podcast and he was saying he created proof um, because, and it's a very Gary Vee strategy. Gary Vee is always like become the life of the party, become the networker. He wanted to network with people with big NFT projects. And so he leveraged his name and he put out a podcast and now he's having people on uh, who have massive um, collections and they're talking about what's coming up next and he can get in early, provide that alpha to his uh, podcast community and really leverage his network um, and grow his network using this podcast, which I thought was brilliant and actually something that we're also trying to do here uh, through this channel and our main channel as well. Um, but essentially, after a few months, uh, not even not that long, I, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing about six to 10 months of his podcast, he started to come out with the Proof Collective, which is a private members only collective of a thousand dedicated NFT collectors and artists. Now, a thousand is extremely small, quite intimate. And he basically, um, I think, wanted to reward his um, podcast listeners with the same sort of alpha that was he was getting from these networking opportunities. Um, and of course, I'll show you what he's done with that as well. Uh, but there's a thousand NFTs. And one of our friends actually minted one. It was a Dutch auction from 5 ETH um, and they sold out for 1 ETH. And our friend minted it for 1 ETH. Uh, they currently are at 122 ETH floor. Um, Trist, you were saying they got up to 140 at their high. Yeah. Is that right? Just click activity. I can indeed do that for the visual. 14 hours ago, there were 130. Just scroll. Yeah, just scroll. Wild. Let's scroll down. Too far, too far. Oh, yeah, because there's only 1,000. There's not going to be yeah. that much volume. But so yeah, they're at 400K for that bad boy. And they're all the same. Um, I do actually, I think, no, the, the Moonbirds are going to have different. Um, but yeah, 400K is ridiculous, especially when you get in for $3,000. Our friend, unfortunately, did sell very early on. <laughs> I mean, $20,000. Um, a good lesson, which his lesson that was, if you believe in something, don't sell it. <laughs> especially which, not the best $4. lesson, but <laughs> if you trust in yourself. If you trust in yourself as well, or buy, do the buy two and sell one. Sort of oh, thing. yeah. So that is the um, original collection of them. And that's pretty brilliant because he's building a team around it. He's got like three full-time data analysts. He's got an event coordinator. Uh, he's got something else. Uh, and he's got like, he says he's going to have 30 people on the team exclus exclusively for the Proof Collective. And they're literally just going to be building this. And it's, it's a fantastic idea, which is why 
the price has gone up so much. The first thing I saw they did, Tris, have you had a look at the grails? I haven't had a look. I know about them, but no looksies. So it's the most fantastic thing I've seen. I think this is the first thing they did and they allowed uh, 1,036. So I guess uh, everyone in the proof plus a few extra actually minted them. Um, and these were artworks because like I was saying, Kevin Rose is very into the actual artwork of it. He was a collector of autoglyphs mm -hmm. um, and uh, he actually loves the art. And you can see this is, I think he has a few X copies. I don't think that's actually X copy. The brilliant thing that they did and these have a floor price of three is, and I haven't seen this done before, so I'm just trying to move my Zoom window to get back here. Um, they had 20 artists and his network is ridiculous, remember? He's a OG Web2. 20 unique pieces of art. So we had each of those artists create a unique piece, piece of art. You got to mint it, but you didn't know who created it until everyone had minted. So it was a name reveal. You saw the art, but you didn't know who the actual artist was, which is the opposite of like, this artist is coming out with something, but you don't know what the art looks like. And it's brilliant because he had massive names in here, like Gary Vaynerchuk, Alexis Ohanian, who is the founder of Reddit. Um, some of these are very expensive as well. I don't Married to Alexis. Serena Williams, question mark. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, Alexis? Yeah. Is he really? I'm wondering, is that, is that the same one? I don't know. Are you starting new rumors or? <laughs> What's his name? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, he's married to Serena Williams. Holy cow. That is yeah. so random, but an excellent fun fact. Very fun. Uh, cool family. Um, the other one was Lava Labs. Uh, had this one down here. Um, this one goes for a lot of money. I don't know who Dimitri Cherniak is, but there's one there. Um, Tim Ferriss, his yeah. first uh, piece of art in this world. And Tyler Hobbs and Gremlin. So, you know, wow, it really does go for a lot. There's only two listed of the Dimitri. Yeah, it does. Actually, I'll go over to the actual Grails um, on OpenSea. Um, the rarest one. It looks to be Sarah Zucker. Who's Sarah Zucker? So you, I'll go uh, highest last sale. So no, the rarest one, in terms of rarity, everyone got to pick what they wanted and mint oh. one. So you, can, so you can see editions minted. 112. Okay. So 112 people chose this one. So um, rarest just meant no one wanted hers, unfortunately. Yes, that is the unfortunate thing about that. Um, but I think everyone was playing because everyone's like, I don't know who these artists are. So they go, like, even like I would have thought like X copy did this or something. Like I probably would have gone for this one. Um, I don't actually know who that is. Lucrece. French person. French person. Um, I would have gone for the one that I would have thought would turn into the most money, um, which was, of course, Lava Labs, I believe. Uh, was yep. sorted by... I got my zoom window up there again. Lava Labs, you can see they're now going for 80 ETH at the max here, down to 40 ETH. And then there's that guy who I didn't know, so for 35 Dimitri. ETH. Uh, and then the and wall. Which is the uh, Tim, no, not Tim, the... Um, Tyler Hobbs. Tyler Hobbs, yeah, who is... Which, art yes. Glyphs? Art, uh, art Glyphs, Tyler Hobbs, no? I don't know Art Glyphs. Like the order Glyphs? Oh, Fidenza, sorry, Fidenza. Ah, uh, it's a Fidenza, fascinating. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Um and he apparently was on Kevin Rose's Proof podcast before uh, his art was popping off. And this is where you get that network effect. Uh, Tim Ferriss, I did think that was a big piece of art there. Um, but it's kind of cool because it comes down, you can see Gary Vee's up there now. Um, it comes down to like which artist it was and then how many people actually minted it. It was a really fun game that they played, really cleanly laid out and you know everything about their website's really awesome. The next and thing you, they did... And you can see with this Grails, if people just flipped them, it just makes the money back that they minted the pass for, which is very cool. always very cool. It's, it's always very cool. And the other thing I actually liked is they had to mint it for 0.05. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a free mint and that oh. money they used very, um, it wasn't an airdrop and they're using that money to fuel the community. So it is sort of like an actual business instead of being like, yeah, this is free, this is free, this is free. But of course, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Um, and then this one I didn't like as much, but they were hearts. Um it's their first proof, which is them and artist profile photo collaboration project. I think they're going for about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 um, ETH. I think they just popped up recently. Last time I checked this, I'm it would be the sure. Moonbirds pump. Yeah. Moonbirds pump. Oh, there's one for 0.85 that went up. Um, yeah. So that was just a, a free drop there, I believe, or a mint. Um, and then the collective intelligence, this is like the core of it. So you can see they've got. The Proof Collective membership, which is the one that you want. These are the ones that are 122 to 140 ETH. Yeah, you got your Grails, depending on what you chose. You've got your Heart. You've got your Moonbirds, which we'll get into in just a second. Um, but uh, of this, they're using this as a real tight community. Within those 1,000 people who hold that 
membership. There's 148 CryptoPunks, 817 Bored Apes, 500 MeBits, 5,000 Art Blocks, 300 Super Rare One of Ones. I don't know what Metaverse is, but there's 273 of those. Do you know what they are? I don't know what they're getting at there. Um, yeah, I don't know at all. Um, but you can see they hold a lot of power and influence. Um, in the Metaverse, literally just Metaverse HQ, maybe. Yeah, not sure about that, but apparently it's something you want. Uh, and then, of course, I can probably just find it by going over to rankings. The latest thing they did, which is the top uh, project at the moment, is Moonbirds with 50,000. What the hell? That's unreal. Where's it, Bored Ape? 15,000. Um, yeah, I, it's the easily, easily the biggest launch of an NFT project by far. Like, Yeah, that's insane. So in terms of top 10 heavy hitters, yeah, top. Yeah, he might be number one. And Gary's definitely top 10. Um, so it's absolutely crushing it. You can see a three billion dollars in no, no, sorry, three hundred million dollars in secondary market sales. That's so crazy. I don't know what percentage they take. I'm guessing five percent. Um, and what I'm excited for too is because Kevin Rose is very connected into that Web two space. I know people like Tim Ferriss are going to be following him. Is like, wait a second, the guy we hang out with just launched hundreds of millions of dollars in a matter of days. Um, and what, what's going to continue to come for this is going to be awesome. Um, so you got to mint two Moonbirds if you were part of the Proof Collective Pass. Um, and you can see they are crushing it. We don't have to go into it too much, but these are the profile photos. And that's what I sort of really like is he took it slow. He did like the thousand and then he did the the artwork, then he did a heart and then he did the 10,000. It's not like boom, massive amounts of... Yeah. Also, this couldn't things. have been predicted as well is the thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Moonbirds going cray cray went cray cray because they they literally went cray cray um the yep. 2.5 eth is just another thing that he was able to do it which just basically allows uh people who can afford it that the buy. raffle yeah um which i i have touched on a few times so i'm not going to go too much into moonbirds in this video but i always find it fascinating that only thirty four thousand people entered their raffle and then now there's one hundred eleven thousand volume Oh, that no. is interesting. Yeah. And it just comes down to alpha. Do you know what's going on at that moment in time? Which, if you don't, join our Discord because we're also helping provide alpha at the right time, such as right now, you've got two hours to go until your VFriend 2 raffle is expired. It'll be expired by the time you see this, but if you're in our Discord, uh, you would know how to get in. Um, um, yeah. Um, the other thing which I have touched on, just in case people haven't watched the other videos, Ben touched on there how he's very connected in the Web2 world. Moonbirds is bringing a lot of people into the NFT world. Moonbirds mm -hmm. is bringing a lot of Web2 people, a lot of venture capitalists, mm -hmm. a lot of just uh, fresh wallets coming in and buying, which is very cool. And that's why it's sort of come out of nowhere during like a lull or a time when nothing's really happened. And then all of a sudden it's gone boom, crazy. It's because it's bringing a lot of money into the world, which is fantastic. Yes, and uh, he actually runs a uh, he ran the modern modern finance podcast because he had and again the podcast is that his hack to get the networks uh, an investment company who invests in modern businesses such as Web three businesses. So he actually runs that as well. So there's a lot of network that he's bringing straight into this market with Moonbirds. Uh, the other thing the Moonbirds are trying to do, which is um, oh, a nesting. first nesting is nesting, yeah. is nesting uh, which is essentially Put simply, allowing you to stake your NFT, your Moonbird, and the longer you stake your NFT, the more rewards you get. So Kevin was saying, it's funny when you when the Board Ape Your Club have a token drop that if you bought your Board Ape Your Club a minute before it dropped, or if you bought it five years before it dropped, you get the same reward. And he's like, we really don't care about secondary market volume, which is hilarious that he's number one at that. Um, because we want people not to buy and sell. We want this to be a legit community um, where people are loyal to it and your loyalty will be rewarded, which hasn't been seen before. And, you know, this is Kevin Rose. Kevin Rose created Dig, which is not a big name now, but it's essentially the Reddit of the day. Before Reddit, he, he has the software engineers, he has the knowledge, he has the network, he has the money, he has the backing, um, and that's obviously why they're doing so well. Um, but I thought just a really excellently produced um, project and it sort of mirrors on listening to him talk about it and how it came around, although it's, he says that it definitely transcended all of his uh, thoughts of what it, how well it would do. He, um, he put himself in the middle of the network by creating the podcast. And Trist, I think we talked about this on this. Um, what did Vitalik do before he launched Ethereum? Oh, you want? Yeah, he, he, he ran a Bitcoin blog. 
He ran a Bitcoin blog, which was the podcast of the day. And that's sort of what we're trying to do here with this community is just to stay in the know, keep our finger on the pulse, wait for a massive opportunity to come up and take it on as a community. So if you want to be part of that community, if you, if you want to be part of our premium community, check out our Patreon link in the description below. We have opened up more seats there because we sold out the first two times. And this is the first array or foray into the uh, providing value as a community together. Uh, we've got a private alpha chat. If you don't want to be part of that, totally fine, totally up to you. Come and join our Discord and you can join the free section and network with people and see if you can meet someone and build in this Web3 space together. Yep. There are people who I know people who have Moonbirds, I believe, in our free section as well. So don't worry. There's room for everybody. There's room for everybody. Everybody. You don't have to have a Moonbird. You don't have to have anything. You don't even have to know what Discord is, but just click the link in the description, follow the steps, and we'd love to to see you introduce yourself and we can actually talk back and forward, which is the best thing about Discord. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.